Karen was called in to assist in an emergency trauma surgery. And with 10 years of experience as an OR scrub nurse, Karen is a welcomed addition at the table, working fluidly with the trauma surgeons and expertly able to anticipate the next calculated move. The patient began to hemorrhage. Karen reaches over for a lap sponge. She grazes her finger across the tip of the surgical blade being held by the surgeon. The blade slices through her two pairs of gloves and immediately she notices she is bleeding. The scrub nurse steps in and Karen steps away from the table, washes her hands with soap and water and reports to employee health. Blood work is drawn from both Karen and the patient and Karen's worst fear comes to life. The patient's blood work is positive for hepatitis B and HIV. Luckily, Karen has had the hepatitis vaccine, which will protect her. But there is no known HIV vaccine, but there is hope. The employee health doctor tells Karen that she will need to take the antiretroviral medications in order to avoid contracting HIV. Prognosis is good. By taking the medications for a period of time, Karen has about an 85% chance of not contracting HIV. Karen calls her husband and tells him she is scared, but she did the right thing by reporting the needle stick injury immediately. The reality is she and her husband will have to wait and worry over the next several months and hope that the medications will keep her from contracting the HIV virus. Karen is also a new mom who is nursing her four-month-old son. She immediately calls the pediatrician and her doctor to discuss what she needs to do for her baby. She cannot nurse her baby while taking the medications, and she doesn't want the potential to put her infant at risk for contracting the virus through nursing. The whole experience leaves Karen feeling frightened and angry. She cannot believe how she must put her life on hold for months while she waits and hopes she doesn't contract the deadly virus. At work, she returns shaken, and she wonders if she'll ever be able to find her confidence again at the table. Unfortunately, Karen's experience is not uncommon. Nurses are at risk for needle stick injuries. Approximately one in three nurses will acquire a needle stick injury during their career. Some of these injuries expose nurses to bloodborne pathogens such as hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and HIV. Technology has improved Sharps devices, and with safety engineered devices that shield and retract the needle after use, there has been a decrease in needle stick injuries. But needle stick injuries still happen, and many injuries occur because of unnecessarily handling of used needles. Nurses who are injured by needle stick injuries face the uncertainty of their health in the immediate period following the injury. And once the news is known, they face whatever life-changing, long-term consequences are associated with the disease they may have contracted. The not knowing and the emotional impact of a needle stick injury can be severe and long-lasting even when a serious infection is not transmitted. Needle stick injuries are a hidden problem in nursing, and data shows that many needle stick injuries can be prevented. As a nurse, you need to become educated on the Sharps equipment you are using, be aware of your surroundings, and anticipate that even the most cooperative patient may jump or flinch when pinched with a needle. Avoid handling the Sharps unnecessarily, and immediately engage the safety device after use. If an injury occurs, wash the area with soap and water and report it immediately. Treatment needs to be started to reduce the transmission of potential deadly diseases. Do not delay. Seek treatment early. Nurses save lives every day. Do not put your own life at risk. Please practice safely by handling sharps with care.